and welcome to your outlet for outdoors and Western lifestyle, The Ben Show. I am your host, Rebecca Warner, aka Beck. And as always, you know, we love hearing from you all your comments, your stories, your ideas. Get a hold of us anytime. Call or text 305 900 2363. Again, that's 305 900 2363. Or you can always drop an email to bendradioshow at gmail.com. Ryan Long Shotgun, as always, is my producer and co-host, Jeff Tigger Earhart. What has been the buzz all around lately is the much-anticipated Yellowstone Season 5 Part 2 is finally upon us. So that means it's coming out on November 10th. You're going to be able to catch it on the Paramount Network. In case you didn't know, Tigger's shaking his head. <laughs> I am not a fan of Yellowstone at all. I got it at all. I'm sorry if if that's going to make somebody mad, but I, I got to be honest, I can't stand it. So you're telling us all Tigger right now that you haven't been waiting patiently since no. January of 2023 for no. two years. People have been waiting for this part two of season five. I'm so tired <laughs> of the memes. Take them to the train station. It's so <laughs> ridiculous. It is. That's the thing. It is so unrealistic in every way, shape, and form. It's just, I, I, you know, I'm glad that it helped with the cowboy culture, per se. Hey, it sold more beef. It sold more beef. We like that. It, it, you know, got more people interested in this Western way of life, per se. Put more people in the rodeo seats. It did. Yeah, that's true. I guess it did, you know, make more people attend more rodeos. But it's, it's how it's portrayed. It's not real it's not even remotely close to real take them to the train station (laughs) that drives me nuts (laughs) right now if rip aka cole hauser was listening he'd be shaking his head going i don't sound like that tigger (laughs) it's i go ahead what else you got yellowstone go ahead well and i'll be honest i don't think either of us have watched past season three so we don't know what everyone's been sitting on their pins and needles waiting for that's the thing we did watch seasons one and two right and i think we made it through half a three yeah did we even make it through half three i I don't know i don't know and and here's my hard part on this i'm gonna be honest i'm a huge kevin costner fan and we know he's been written out of it however his voice is being used on the trailer that's out right now for this season five part two of yellowstone you can find the trailer by the way on our website thebenshow.com kevin costner's voice is being used there there's speculation that he may be in this last part of the season oh, from they old co- footage. Oh, that's how they've been able to put this that's thing together. That's what's being speculated is that they're using past filmed footage of Costner in his role as the infamous John Dutton. You know, I don't mean to change subjects, but the Horizon movie that he did. Yeah, uh, yeah that I want to see it. I, I, w- I want to see it, too, but it did not go well. Well, not in the movie theaters, no, it didn't. it's not but going well at all. My understanding, Horizon 1 and 2 has gone over better at home. So I'm hoping it's more like... <laughs> And there went Did you the just coffee. spill coffee everywhere? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to grab anything oh. I can right now to keep it away from the electronics, okay? It'll be okay. It'll be okay. All right, back to what I was saying. Horizon. Sticky <laughs> mess over there with all your creamer. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, we're I'm talking sorry. about we're talking about Horizon. All right, while Horizon. We still got electricity. Yes, Kevin Costner's films as well, one and two. I'm hoping when we do get to see them, not that they'll be just like Lonesome Dove or something like that, but how it was made for TV versus the movie theater. That's what I'm hoping for when we do get a chance to actually watch it, review it, give our thoughts on it. And that's why I came out and said I don't care for Yellowstone because I did watch, we did watch a couple of seasons. I can't say anything about Horizons yet because we haven't seen it. But, but uh, by golly, I'm going to offer an opinion when I do of see Of course it. you are, Tigger. You but are those right. of you that have been waiting and much anticipating this Yellowstone Season 5 Part 2, you can tune in with the rest of America on Sunday, November 10th on Paramount Network. Take them to the train station. <laughs> Dumb.
I have some good news for everybody, especially those that have been wondering about the Biltmore Estate in Asheville, North Carolina. It is opening this weekend after a month of recovery following Hurricane Helene. It opened November 2nd. The reopening marks the beginning of the holiday season at the 8,000-acre property once home to George W. Vanderbilt. Although the estate's main house suffered no structural damage, parts of the grounds and buildings were flooded, requiring extensive repairs from Hurricane Helene. The Biltmore, for more than 125 years, has been witness to the community's resilience and understands the importance of reopening to support local recovery efforts. Approximately 2,400 employees work at the estate, and while some lost homes or face temporary unemployment, they are expected to return in phases. The estate hopes to welcome visitors for their annual Christmas at Biltmore celebration. We have a tremendous following in North Carolina on a number of different stations there. Y'all need to have us come down and visit. I know, I know. It's been probably about... 15 years since I've been to North Carolina. I would love a reason to come back. I have never been to North Carolina. (gasps) To my knowledge, I have not been to North Carolina. I want to see it. It is gorgeous. I want to hang out. So it just, is gorgeous. Hey, those of you that are in North Carolina, maybe put in a little plug. Have a little Tigger Beck come and hang out. And also for everybody in North Carolina, just know that you have continued to be in our thoughts and prayers as you work through the aftermath from Hurricane Helene. Switching gears, Tara Dower, a 31-year-old from Boulder, Colorado, has set a new record by running the 2,200-mile Appalachian Trail in just 40 days beating the previous fastest known time by 13 hours. She had hiked the trail before in over five months, but wanted to push herself to complete it faster. Throughout the grueling journey, Dower relied on her crew, including her mom, to provide food and support at road crossings and consuming about 300 calories per hour with items like energy gummies, goldfish crackers, pretzels. She also drank protein shakes at each stop, and despite facing sleep deprivation, hallucinations even, and frequent falls through the rugged terrain of Maine and New Hampshire. Her determination kept her going until she crossed the finish in record time, despite not fully believing she'd make it until the last three miles. She didn't think she was going to make it until the last three miles. Dower is now focusing on recovering, including enjoying ice cream and a long rest. But a tip of the hat to this Colorado woman for running the 2200 mile Appalachian Trail in just 40 days. Crew, let's take a short break. When we come back, we're talking e-bikes. You're listening to The Ben Show. Hey guys and gals, this is John Arman with Ultimate Outdoor Adventures TV. Ultimate Outdoor Adventures TV travels the back roads to the backwaters in pursuit of the ultimate adventure in hunting and fishing. Join Team U away every week for exciting action in the crosshairs of the outdoors. Catch Ultimate Outdoor Adventures TV on YouTube, Amazon Prime, and make sure to follow Team U away on Facebook and Instagram to share in the Ultimate Outdoor Adventure. Here is how we are changing things up on the bend, the fruits of our labors to the frying pan. We put those recipes to the test. Now, over the next few months, we're going to be testing out your submissions. Will we survive? Tune in next week. You've waited, dreamt of a hunting adventure, and now have harvested that trophy of a lifetime. Keep the memory alive with a custom-designed mount preserved as a work of art. Check out our approved taxidermist. Depending on your location, the award-winning Schneider Taxidermy is located in Helena, Montana. When hunting the Dakotas, JB's Wildlife Designs in Mandan, North Dakota, then Shadron Creek Taxidermy in Nebraska, and for the Central USA, Little Rack Taxidermy in Macomb, Illinois. Reach out to The Ben Show and let us help you find the right taxidermist. It's super easy to get a hold of Beck, and we want to hear any story that you may have or just what's happening around your bend. 305-900-2363. That's the hotline. Leave a message. Send a text. 305-900-2363. Welcome back to your outlet for outdoors and Western lifestyle, The Ben Show. 
I am your host, Rebecca Warner, a.k.a. Beck, right along shotgun, my co-host, Jeff Tigger Earhart. Those of you that have followed along with the show know that I just recently came back from a trip out to Utah where I visited Zion National Park. But what was extra special about this trip, not that it was just a girl's trip, but was something that I gave a try to that I had never tried before. We've talked about them on our show, but I've never actually gotten to try one. That was e-bikes. Game changer. You said that was the highlight of your trip. E-bikes were by far the highlight. Us gals, by the way, averaged an age of uh, the oldest gal girlfriend of mine. She was 51 down to the youngest friend was 20. And all four of us came back. At first, we were a little speculative. Uh, My oldest friend, she was a little hesitant. She was like, I don't know if I'm okay with this. I don't know if I'm going to like this. But once we got on them and just even toured around the town of Springdale, Utah, which is at the beginning of Zion National Park where we rented the bikes, she right away was like, I can do this. I can totally do this. So was it a little tricky to get the hang of it? Because I know you have to just kind of slowly just keep pedaling, even though it doesn't charge from pedaling. You have to kind of just keep pedaling. Was it hard to get the hang of it at first? Not really. I mean, the only thing is that e-bikes are a little heavier, okay? They're a little heavier. So if you're starting out on an incline, uh, one of my girlfriends, she's a a bit shorter than what I am. She was having a little bit of problems, but then we realized that the e-bikes we were renting actually had an assist where you could give yourself a little boost to kind of turbo take off, and then it wasn't so hard for her to do so. But the bikes are heavier, so you want to make sure you stay uh, fairly stable if that's that makes sense. But honestly, from an operational standpoint, very easy to use. And just like you said, Tigger, um, all e-bikes are a little different, but the ones that we used, you had to continue pedaling, but you did not have to continue pedaling fast or hard. It was only as much as you wanted to give. And then that e-bike would on its own automatically engage. And that was the trick, right? To engage, you had to slowly just kind of keep pedaling. And I'm talking, I went very slow, just like a nice stroll went on a on a Sunday walk. I just went nice slow. But the e-bike, actually, the ones we had, had gear. So you could go up to one, two, three, four, five. And then when you were cruising at five, you were really cruising. So they uh, they have a charge. How long did that charge last? That When you rented them in the morning, they were fully charged. Did that go throughout the day or did you have to stop at a charging station along the trip halfway through and give yourself another charge? Our bikes were a full day rental and we did stop to do some very nice hikes throughout. So of course there was some downtime, but all four of us, when we returned our bikes, we had only used, uh, there's like four lights on it to tell you how much battery you have. We'd only used like one. So we had plenty of battery. Now, I do have some friends that own a pair of e-bikes and they've gone out and they have said where there's, uh, how do I put this? You can, it depends on how long you go. They went a lot further and went, you know, I, I think they said Maybe they did. Maybe some inclines. They did like 30 miles. I mean, it was an extreme, extreme bike ride. And the one individual didn't bike very much to save power on the battery. And he ended up having to actually pedal all the way home the last three miles so i thought that this was a really really neat idea that i don't know who it was that came up with this if it was you you did you came up with this idea for you guys i thought this was a great idea for you to be able to see a lot more terrain uh, versus hiking or taking the shuttle buses around because like you said in the bus you're just visiting and you don't get a chance to see the landscape but i was doing a little research on everybody's wondering well when you pedal, doesn't that charge the battery? And no. No, it doesn't. I was doing some research, and I I think that there are some bikes out there that do that, but they are not common at all because they are not very efficient. The input that you have to put into the bike to charge the battery is so much more than the output of the actual battery propelling the bike. 
which is why they go to a charging station. Does that make sense? Yes, you've you've got that correct there, Tigger. And we might not have everything absolutely set in stone on how we're saying it. We're not salespeople for e-bikes whatsoever. Right. We'll so try some though if anybody well, has some. Exactly. Well, let's we'll put that disclaimer. We're we're not selling e-bikes, but we are giving a thumbs up to trying them and giving them a use, especially in these national parks, because this is what it came down to. Us gals, when I brought this idea up, in case you missed the last show, I never knew that Zion National Park didn't allow you to drive through with your own vehicle. I'm used to Yellowstone, Glacier, you know, just to give some good examples where you drive you and get out and you pet get the fluffy mad. Cow. Yeah, you get mad at the vehicle in front of you and, and it's stopping here, Zion, because there's limited parking within that national park. They have a very, very well orchestrated shuttle system that takes you around to all the various outlooks, different hikes. And that's why I found out my research before going that e bikes were extremely popular in order to see the park in an efficient way and not have to sit on that shuttle bus. I like to visit. So that's where immediately to me, it seemed like a no brainer to rent the e-bikes because otherwise I'll sit on a shuttle and I will visit not just with the gals I'm with. I'll also visit with everybody Bus around them and everybody, yeah. because I want to know where they're from and what they're there for. I just, I'm that type of a person, a very friendly individual. The e-bikes forced you to slow down and take in the scenery all around you. Just which be was in majestic. the environment. Now the yes. e-bikes I know have gotten very popular with a lot of hunters, especially uh, fly uh, the, fishermen. Yeah, fly fishermen, uh, the guys and gals that are bow hunters mm -hmm. because they're so darn quiet. Uh, last episode, when we were talking about pheasant hunting and we talked about stealth a little bit, they become very popular for those individuals that are going into the backcountry because they are so darn quiet. I know that you can get uh, two wheel. Yeah, two-wheel drive. They're two wheels, right? Yeah, two-wheel drive where the front one drives as well. I want to say four-wheel drive, so it's, but it's two-wheel drive. I know. You're trying to wrap your mind around I, the right kind of. I'm trying to grasp this thing. But <laughs> but no, that's ac absolutely correct. They are extremely quiet. Uh, the other nice feature about them is they're not leaving out any emissions, so it's not like the wildlife can smell you coming, your exhaust from your vehicle, as well as the the bikes aren't like your typical mountain bike. However, you can get the snow bikes and such with the wide fat tires. These ones we rented also had the nice wide fat tires. So you really felt like you were more stable on it. And our bikes that we rented had a, ba a basket on the back of it that held our gear easily with one of those cargo nets over the top of the basket. So everything was secure. Uh, one of the features also that we loved was just the simplicity that you could park anywhere because some of these towns, when you go to national parks, you know yourself, good luck finding a parking spot. It becomes very congested. So then you're stuck at one spot. And we found out when we got back with our entire day after our entire day of seeing Zion, we would just twiddled around with our e-bikes because they didn't have to be back until a certain time of the day. And we were able to scoot around and park anywhere. And it was it was just a lot of fun. I will also throw this out there for those of you that maybe have kids or in college or going to college soon. Uh, the gal that was with us, she's 20. She goes to um, MSU Montana State University in Bozeman. She immediately, that was the highlight of the trip, was using these e-bikes. And she was already pitching at her mom that for her birthday and Christmas, oh, this would really come Katie. in handy mm -hmm. to get to Going school. To class. Yeah, she's like, Mom, <laughs> do you know how nice this would right? be? I mean, this is all I need to get from my apartment over to the campus. So just kind of landing this thing, my last question for you about the e-bikes. And I don't think I even asked you this. When you come back from the vacation, do you feel that having the e-bikes, you were a lot more efficient in your short time that you had there at the park, that you were more efficient of seeing everything. 100%. There was never any waiting in lines, Boom. waiting for other people. Efficiency, absolutely. Give them a try the next time you have an opportunity to rent, rent one. Give it a try. I mean, like I said, we're not trying to sell them, but at least rent them and give it a try. It's a no-brainer, and I think your whole family will be on board and do a thumbs up, and you won't hear that 
Are we done yet? Mm-hmm. Head to our website, thebenshow.com. Again, that's thebenshow.com, as I will post photos of the e-bikes that we rented, along with all the rental information we used. We used Zion Guru out of Springdale, Utah, to go see Zion National Park, and everything will be right there for you to check it out. All right, we're going to take a short break, crew. We come back. We're going to let you know about a trend that's happening at weddings right now. You're listening to The Ben Show. Howdy, folks. Do you have that young cow kid in your life and trying to find the perfect gift this holiday season? Look no further than the Happy Toy Maker. Order now in time for Christmas at thehappytoymaker.com and check them out on Facebook. Toys that last a lifetime. Is there that particular pair of boots or that shirt or pair of jeans that you just can't find anywhere else? Check out Medora Boot and Western Wear. Medora Boot and Western Wear is the go to for boots, jeans, especially jackets, and even those hard to find accessories that make perfect gifts. Check out MedoraBoot.com or better yet, give Kim a call at 701 623 1005 and tell Kim that Tigger and Beck sent you. For the latest in Western and outdoor practical and fashionable wear, there is only one Medora boot and Western wear. This is Beck. First, I appreciate all of you for listening and making the bend part of your week. Many of you have asked, how do I catch past episodes? The answer is super easy. Head to thebendshow.com and click on the shows tab. There you can listen to every episode all the way back to episode one. Podcasters, head to your favorite podcasting app and search the bend. You'll find us Be sure to follow and subscribe and never miss another episode again. Welcome back to The Ben Show, your outlet for outdoors and Western lifestyle. I'm your host, Rebecca Warner, a.k.a. Beck. Ryan Lag Shotgun, as always, my co-host, Jeff Tigger Earhart. All right, weddings are still going on. And as we're getting close to election time, nobody, I think we're all tired of hearing about the politics. We'll get this Couples are banning politics at their weddings right now. I don't think that's a bad idea. How are they going about banning politics? What do you mean? Well, couples are actually, some of them are even banning booze from their fall weddings to avoid political arguments. Some are also banning political talk altogether. They say that couples are just putting up big signs that say no politics at the receptions. Now, in just a couple of days is uh, the big election day. I think it's coming up next Tuesday, right? It's on November 5th, so just a couple of days. Just a reminder in case you haven't voted yet, write that down. But I think that this should continue on, not just at weddings, but at every family gathering. There should be signs that say no political conversations because they can get awful darn heated. I agree, especially this time right now as we're watching the turmoil going on in our country. I think uh, there's a lot of folks, if you're hosting Thanksgiving or Christmas this year, maybe just send out a polite disclaimer or just have that sign at the door where it says, no shoes, no politics. Exactly, because regardless of how it turns out next week with the elections, there's still going to be a lot of debate and discussion. He did, I'm going to say. That's going to be going on. It just doesn't need to happen. Doesn't need to happen. Happy occasions, right? Let's keep everybody happy. And if nothing else, make mom happy, okay? She doesn't want arguments happening. Mom doesn't need to be crying during Thanksgiving. (laughs) All right. Here's another one for you. You know that I love to fly and travel. Well, have you heard about this woman? She was reported in the New York Post saying a woman flying to from, excuse me, Anchorage, Alaska to Seattle, Washington, was horrified when her seat mate opened a can of tuna during the flight. I can't imagine that. Do you know how much, how badly tuna smells? If somebody would sit there and pull open a can of tuna and actually open that on the plane, I too would be mortified. Like, seriously? Okay, I've been that guy. What? Not, no, not with tuna, I'm saying, but uh, maybe I grab some beef jerky. And open that up, and that has a smell to it. Or maybe at the gas station, you buy those little Slim Jims or something like that. I I, I got to be honest. I've been that guy. You are that guy? I have, I've been that guy. I've opened those up. Oh, no. And I love jerky. Don't get me wrong. But no, I have learned in the long run here that you're better off being a good seat mate than being that guy. Yeah, the can of tuna is going a little bit too far. 
Well, I... Yeah. Yeah. All right, here's my last news story for y'all. A 115-year-old time capsule was recently discovered in Montrose, Colorado. The time capsule was buried underneath some stairs at the Susquehanna County Courthouse. Say don't, that again. Where, don't ask me to say that Where was that again. it, Beck? Where was it? What was the name of the county courthouse? Susquehanna? I don't know. Sorry if I, I I butchered it. It's in Montrose, Colorado, there you regardless. Go. Montrose, you can pronounce that one. The jar was filled with five newspapers, election ballots, and a letter from the year 1909. They were all preserved because the jar had kerosene in it. I never knew you could use kerosene for that. Obviously, it worked. Local leaders have purchased a new time capsule, which they are now filling with artifacts, so someone can discover them in another 115 years. Those are really cool. We did that when we were kids in grade school. Did you? Yeah, I have no idea what what happened to them, nor do I even really remember what we put in them. You know, I suggest this is a fun family activity to do, especially if you're one of those that maybe uh, has been living on your family farm or ranch, or this has been your family's house for, you know, 50, 60, 100 years to really consider doing that. Do a Neat time idea. capsule. Neat idea of preserving a little bit of history. If you have found a time capsule before, share the story with us. We want to know what was inside. Let us know. Call 305-900-2363. And that's all for this week, crew. Thanks again for following along with us. And if you have any questions, or maybe you know of something spot worthy for us to share, or as well as we want to know what your area's field reports are, hunting season's going on. We want to see your pictures. We want to hear about how it has been. Ben, that number again, call or text anytime, 305-900-BEN. Again, that's 305-900-2363. Or you can always email bendradioshow at gmail.com. If you missed part of this show or you want to hear past shows, you can find them all on the website thebendshow.com as well as be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcasting app or to the Ben Show YouTube channel and finally a big thanks again like I said for coming along with us and whether you're coming or going today stay with us as we ranch it up and remember keep up with me back all week long by following the Bend on Facebook and on Instagram at the Bend Show this is Rebecca Warner catch back if you can next week on the Bend <laughs>